a sacrifice induced for the altar of your vanity. A jealous, hungry God craving praises of profanity. With bedroom dark and dine and a deep mouth stained with wine, it drinks. It's filled. It was your mother's, not your brother's, that agreed to feed you poison. This egregious lack of choice indeed seemed fit to join your voice in. With lies disguised as prizes of reason and wisdom, with briberies of finery to weaken any criticism. Can the fly invade the blossom that devours it? A mouth that lies in wait for a gift of life to shower in. All right, um, it is session 76. Uh, we are picking this up the night after the disastrous werewolf attack. Um, okay. This picture you see on screen... Um, I was telling some people uh, I wasn't thinking, and I deleted the scene where I had your the background with your group haven, the group temple. So I just I found a picture that I think represents it decently well. Just imagine there's no skylight, and the back end, the end you're looking at, is closed in, and that is the stage where you guys come up when you are doing your services. Mm-hmm. Right, so behind you, as I remember describing the room, was a bunch of um, thick shutters, like four or five windows that are completely shut up tight, nice and tight. Yeah, good to know. Right, and so there is a cellar that uh, you guys often sleep in. Um, on the other side of the stage, there is like a, uh, a couple of uh, small rooms where people could come in and talk to your recruiters, more or less, your receptionists. Uh, oftentimes your ghouls wait out there. And there are apartments above you where uh, your herd, the uh, cultists, stay for the most part. All right. You guys have awakened. Some of you are hurt quite badly. And... Uh, you may have had to spend some blood to heal, five blood to heal, and a night of rest to heal one level of ag. Wait, why five blood to heal? Because that's what it says in the book. Ag for, for the ag. For ag. Okay, five for the ag and one for the normal waking up. Uh, I'm not going to heal, but I have ten blood. Okay. Um, spend a willpower point for me. Okay, did we regain willpower after sleeping right away? Or? You regained one uh, point of willpower for sleeping safely. Uh, so I don't just, re I don't add it to my ship then. So right. I can't count it as, you know, spent. So. Uh, the look on Agatha's face as you guys meet up. It is plain to see in her body language that she is... The beast is, is clawing at her. She's, her fangs are uh, extended. Um, her vampiric nature is uh, shining through quite easily at the moment. Uh, she's stalking, twitchy, very hungry. You can all tell. She's very hungry. How are the rest of you doing? I am 13 blood points. Okay. Um, 19. So at 13, I believe, uh, Albana, you can either spend a willpower for me or roll self-control. Or I know I'm No, you're on Road of the Abyss, aren't you? You're not on Humanity uh, anymore. Yes. Ooh, ooh. But um, uh, the Road of the Abyss is also self-control. It is self-control? Okay, go ahead and roll self-control or spend a point of willpower. Your choice. I'm going to spend a point of willpower. Okay. 
I think, yeah, honestly, Labiana, you didn't get hurt. Hatchipset, you didn't get hurt. No. But uh, I will say that Labian is terribly concerned about her child. Uh, yes, he is. Uh, or, um, Tyrannus took a beating. He's badly injured. Um, he's down to three ag at the moment, as memory serves. So she's um, kind of fussing over him at the moment. <laughs> yes, he is going out to feed. Yeah, he is. He is going to go feed, and he's not coming back until he is well fed. Right, so I'll give you guys about 15 minutes or so to discuss the aftermath as you guys meet up. Oh, we need, need blood! Calm down, calm down. Oh, give me Wait. one of those fucking cultists. <laughs> Do not touch our cultists. If you wish, we can go to this, uh, we can go hunt together. God knows that we also that I also require some blood at this point. In the meantime, I think I I think so, we should send some of our ghouls over to check if there's any cleanup is needed. Hopefully, the lupines shouldn't be able to tell them by a scent. Sure, whatever. Send whoever you want. I need blood. Ah. And I'm gonna stressfully move my leg. Shake my leg. Looking at the edge. Clenching my fists. I did mention the Lupine's oven is going to uh, nearly snow, nearly grow. Uh, as, the, as the events of last night would be in her head. The death of her, of the first death of her child that plays in her, in her head. If you wish, we can go hunt together. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Okay. I don't want to wait any longer. I honestly don't know if I can keep it hold, keep it like this longer. I really don't want to attack anyone near me. So, Albina and um, Agatha go out to feed. Okay. Um, while you two guys are out feeding, um, Hatshepsut and uh, Labiana are left uh, discussing any further actions they wish to take. I should be able to send my uh, my ghoul to, at the very least, check, pass by the area. If if there are any. If any of the caltrops are remaining, or well, anything really, we need to we need to deal deal with that. Mm hmm. Yes. Certainly, anything we can do at this point in time to minimise the mess uh, is well worth um, looking into. Okay, are you guys personally going, or are you sending somebody? Sending, sending a, uh, sending, I'm sending my crossbowman ghoul with explicit instructions. If it looks like anyone is following him, or like, you know, looking to attack him, just get out of there. If, it's, if they are werewolf, I don't think he can, but he can try. Hmm. Better run faster than werewolf. Yeah, um, of course, Labiana certainly won't be sending Tyrannus back into that kind of a situation. <laughs> She's like, nope. <laughs> nope, nope. Yeah. I mean, if I could send someone, I would, but that's all I have. And certainly, I don't want to risk losing him. Okay. Uh, let me make a quick GM screen roll. <coughs> so, Chris, uh, okay. is, so the right. difference between, uh, like, Dexter to melee hunting role and, like, charisma subterfuge hunting role 
Is the letter a little bit more subtle way to feed? It's all like... about your approach. If you're using Charisma Subterfuge, you are convincing <clears throat> people to come in the back alley with you. Um, but... If you're using Dex Melee, you're walking up to them, and you stick the knife in their, in their rib, and you go, if you want to live, you're going to come back in this back alley with me. But, like, no one... Like no option has better, uh, how to say it, a stealthy approach. Right? All of them are equally, you know, subtle. Well, yes. Okay, here's the deal. I assume that your greatest dice pool is going to be feeding, because that literally keeps you alive every single night. Why would you not feed that way? Uh, because yeah, because I was going for the Dexter to melee, but if it's not going to be subtle, I'm going to go with charisma. Well, I assume that, again, why would you make yourself easily caught? Okay. Okay. That's why I don't make a big deal out of whichever dice pool you roll, because I... Unless you explicitly tell me you're going to make a production out of it, I, I pretty much believe you keep it quiet. Okay. So, what will be the hunting roll difficulty? Uh, it is four if you just don't care, and it's six if you want something clean. Okay. Uh, let's go for something clean. Uh, be nice with me. Uh, I'm going to help each other or just going out and hunting? But not see why not help each other. Okay. All right. Well, add a dice then to your dice pool. Okay. And just we can just have Agatha roll as you're watching each other's backs and helping each other. Mm -hmm. Okay. Four. Well, you each can take um, eight blood without killing anybody, or more if you just don't care about corpses. Um, I think. I think I will take, wait, uh, I think I will take 10 from one person. Uh, no, what, wait, uh, how many person I have? Uh, four, four times two, right? Okay. Four people. Um, so three times two is six. Okay, um, I'm going to take uh, 10 blood from one person and then two from the rest. Okay. So 16 total blood. Right. Give me a... Um, dexterity and ledger domain roll to dispose of the dead body. Okay. Uh, dexterity, ledger And can Albina help me with this? I don't really have ledger domain. Okay. Yeah. Right, As we that. learned last, last session, none of us have ledger domain. <laughs> Alright. Um, Albina, how much blood do you take? 17 total. Can she help with shadows or something? Sorry, what? Can, can't Albina help with shadows despite the lack of ledger domain at this role? It's, I think it's more about place to hide the body rather than doing it stealthily. Yeah, it's, it's literally just stuffing the body in garbage or down the uh, great drain or and it's doing it unnoticed. Yeah, that's why that's right, the shadows come in play. Yeah. And I don't know if that would be possible because the shadows are just temporary. They are not going to be hiding the body yeah. forever. No, it's, it's to cover the process of it. Oh. All right, well, you got two successes. If you want a chance that you can roll one more dice and for a, for a help action, and then Albina has to do the same thing. She has to hide at least one body. Uh, I, I, no, I'm not going to roll. I'm not going to roll. Okay. I would take two successes as well. Albina, you have to dispose of a body as well. Okay. Um, what is the roll again? Uh, intelligence and... It's a Dexterity and Ledger Domain. And uh, Agatha, you can add a dice to for Agatha helping you. I don't have any ledger domain. I had but, I rolled with like I said, seven. Like I said, 
you got dexterity, right? You can carry bodies. Yeah. All right. Well, no successes, but it's not a botch. Um, all right. Albana, perception alertness, please. That's the one that's watch. All right. Oh, no biggie. Boy. Um, your next hunting roll is going to be at a plus one difficulty. Uh, until uh, basically until I say otherwise, because uh, you're going to start hearing some distressing rumors about how a beautiful yet uh, cold, dark-eyed, dark-haired woman with a white streak in her hair um, is seducing and killing men. You are the Albina the Ripper. <laughs> Unfortunately, they saw you trying to hide the body, and then, as they saw what you did, they saw you trying to hide the body, and they're like, and they're starting to spread rumors in the area in which you were feeding. So it's going to take some time and some effort on your part to quell those rumors. Wait a minute, aren't you that murderer? No, that's my sister. <laughs> <laughs> my sister, that's, not me. That's my yeah, sister. This is what dominates for. Yes, mm -hmm. but she didn't see the person, so. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's just gonna take some time and effort. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So we hunt and go back to the haven, I guess. Okay. Um. By the time you guys get back, uh, Hatchipsit, you're the man you sent uh, has returned. He said nobody followed him. There were no signs of it. Uh, there was a crowd of people uh, digging through all the debris trying to find useful stuff. And But all the silver weapons were gone. In fact, all the weapons were gone. Wow. Like clean gone or... Like, gone, gone. Just not there. Okay. Yeah. And nobody seemed to be talking about it either. So there wasn't like, I just found a treasure trope with silver. You know, nobody's saying anything like that. Okay. All right. Should we be worried about that? I don't know. Worst case scenario, the werewolves got it, and they'll be able to use it to track mm -hmm. us. I don't think, I think the worst case scenario, a vampire got it. Why? Because if they track it back to us, that will be worse than the werewolves tracking it back to us. Why would that be worse? I mean, listen, the, the th thing with the vampires is that they will come after you not only, like, they can come after you physically, but why do, would they do that when they can come after you socially? Which, in the long term, is a little bit more trouble. If they come at you physically, you either get hurt or killed. But that's not going. Having the weapons does not add uh, those than to harm us socially. They will, they will probably kill us if they tra trace the things to back to us. Unlikely. It seems like a very good thing. To regardless, do. Oh, regardless, no, regardless, there's not much we can do at this point. Yeah. Yeah. At, I mean, look, at the people very... are not talking about the silver cultures, that's good. At the very least, the humans don't appear to be aware of it, and that's all that matters right now. Well, these uh, the things that we can. Uh, Seeing as the human, uh, this has been taken care of. Mm. What tools would you all like to focus on today? Of, uh, we still have the issue of the ground ground. We still have the issue of uh, capturing a live werewolf. Oh no, I'm, I'm not helping with capturing the werewolf. I 
that's I'm not. Good luck with that. Preferably a member of that. Uh, then pack that there to kill one of us. They did kill yep. one of us. Yes. Um, and there is also the matter of us assuring the success of the protege of Camillus. Well, I mean, we do still did not settle the Gangrel thing with uh, our helmets. We need to go, still go to him and tell him that we officially accept or not accept the offer. Uh, again, for about the Gangrel, after the last meeting with the with these claws that the werewolves had, I will say that I will help you with the Gangrel indirectly. Uh, so do not expect me to be on the field. Searching, oh. investigating, etc. If I okay. have an answer to your question, I will help with that. Or if my backgrounds can help you, I will try to help with you with that. The Gangrel is a coward. We need to find his child. She's the best option that we have to find a way to scare him away from this land. Uh, good luck. Um, okay. At, uh, at this point, there is a pretty loud knock at your doors, and one of the attendants in front comes up and says, uh, says, there's a couple of very sick-looking men here to see, uh, Master Nicodemus. Well, I'm looking a lot famous. The last days, you know, last nights. I assume Nicodemus is there. Yes. Okay. Um, hold on, having some trouble. Uh, oh, just a second. It's uh, it's not us. It's uh, the 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 men come in and they look. Uh, immediately, they look like they have liver problems to your experienced eyes. Um, of course, you don't think of it that way, but they look like very jaundiced. Um, look like they have kidney issues. Their skin is slightly yellow. Um, and they kind of walk like they're in pain, a little bit doubled over. And they're like, uh, they say, uh, oh, we, we we're here to bring you word that uh, the Mistress Fazia uh, awaits outside for your invitation. I'll see ya. Uh, I don't okay. think of them also just letting them in upon hearing that they're sick. You would uh, rather investigate them outside, primarily. Um, but okay. okay. Uh, so if you're standing outside, um, Right as they say that, uh, a wagon comes up and is pulled by a couple of donkeys. Uh, so it's not a very big wagon. And there's a third person sitting on the front driving the uh, donkeys and sitting in the back just looking around is a familiar figure wearing a familiar wooden mask to you. Um, Nicodemus would thank the, the man carrying the message. He would, uh, would instantly approach the familiar presence. And... It, uh, it draws to a stop and she hops out. Uh, and Nicodemus, so good to see you. It's been so many years. And she just walks up and gives you a big old hug. Whack. Properly rotten hug, no doubt. It is good to see you <laughs> and this evening, and it's 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 very true. It has been far too long. We've been separated for many times. How is it? Is the are the centuries good on you? Oh, I've uh, oh, I'm quite good. My research is is doing quite well, and I thought, well, you know, since Rome's getting so big and 
you know, my, my student and good friend here is, is making a name for himself, I thought, why not come by and establish myself? And that way I can be here to teach him and, and learn while in the biggest city in the world. That's a splendid idea. Do you have a, a more detailed concept? What would place your, in, uh, your place in Rome be? It's a city of great opportunities, but also a great strife. Oh, well, I, you know, I, I don't care about politics. I, uh, I was hoping that you might help me find a uh, couple of spots to, to hunt and to haunt and maybe a bit of help selling up in an area with sick people and fresh corpses. As sad as, as it is for me to say, there's never a decline in supply of fresh corpses in Rome. It's just how it is with too much city, to, with inf inferior, inferiorly, inferiorly sized cities with too great of a populace. And, it, I, I, and I fear that the hygienic conditions have been quite unfortunate and they've contributed to the cause too well. And this shouldn't be a problem. As far as as far as the location goes, hmm, I would have to think about that because because it um, it's it has started to be very very crowded. You see, just because we ended wars with Carthage and everything else, it doesn't mean that the people have just left. In fact, they've been blooming quite a while. I. I hope you did all the necessary in, uh, presentations and all of that. I believe the the higher ups are very touchy about things. Oh well, I uh, sent word on ahead of me, but I haven't talked to him yet face to face. It, uh, you know how these things get. Uh, sometimes messengers get lost. I haven't even seen him yet. So listen, you gotta invite me inside. I'll say hi to everybody. I don't see why not. Oh, cool. Sure. Good. And she grabs a sack, and there's a stench that wafts out of this bag. <laughs> and she opens it up, and she and you hear this kind of wet squelching noise. And she pulls out a kidney, and she goes, she kind of sniffs at it, and she goes, oh, here, um, I pulled this out of one of my uh, minions over here. Um, it didn't look very good, and she and she like underhand tosses it to you. She's like, "You, yeah, you can keep that. You know, learn what you can from it." Closes the bag up, and uh, <laughs> carries it inside with her. Oh, uh, interesting! Is is that a new project of yours? It seems that the man has been overusing um, overusing meat and alcohol. Oh, yeah, well, you know, I'm still working on trying to find the right combination of uh, organs and uh, exploring the flesh crafting that I learned, uh, trying to mix in, can I physically find the right balance between the bodies of death and the bodies of life? Uh, you know, what makes it really become like us? Is there a way to, to mix the dead and the live to get something like us? So I'm still working on that. Mm, a fascinating theory. You, you really need to walk me through all of this because this seems like a precipice to a possible breakthrough. That's what I thought. I'm, I'm a little bit stuck, but I'm, it's okay. I did. Well, I'll save that for a surprise. Um, I did make a one breakthrough. Uh, hopefully I never have to use it, because uh, it would mean I'm, I'm doing something I really don't want to do. But, yeah, I'll save that for a surprise for later. Okay. Okay, that's a, that's all fine. Um, you've been in Rome for how many, how many nights? Is this your first night? Oh, yeah, it, it, she's, as, as you walk in the door, she's talking to you. She's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I just got here. Um, we pulled in through... Pulled in through the north up there and uh, made our way up through the mountains and then over the top 
and it came back down. Uh, there's a whole bunch of pissed off, uh, pissed off people in the field. Did you know that? A lot of angry people. Oh yeah, it's, it's part of the domestic policy politics. Mm, I believe I expect it to last quite a while, um, and it may have a pretty dynamic uh, repercussion. So, so there, there there is a political angle that may cause people get riled up. So. So if you ever wander streets uh, at night for search of uh, for search of nourishment or twitch subjects, um, you best be wary that people may be a bit riled up. But but all, by all means, by all means, um, please take. Um, I, I actually recommend you to take a bit. Of, a few days off of your research, a few nights off of your research, and just enjoy Rome because it can be quite cumbersome to get used to various fickle things that happen. Huh. Well, I guess it can take me a little time to get comfortable. Hey, what's that on the desk? And she reaches out and she grabs a stack of paper and she holds it up to the candles. And she's doing this as she walks into the main room talking to you, right? So all of you guys are there now seeing her do this. And she walks up to one of the candles on the wall, and she goes, and she peers in it, and she takes her mask off. And she goes, uh, it's a letter from a Tiberius Gracchus. Hmm. All of you are hereby invited to my villa. Uh, is this supposed to be, I think it's supposed to be tomorrow night, right? That's, I think that's what the date is. And she reads the date she out. Reads and she goes, she goes eyes. where did you grab it from was this lying around oh yeah it was just sitting right up front as i walked in i guess you haven't got to that yet tonight that's fine <laughs> and she is totally oblivious to the fact that she is in greatly invading your guys's privacy like this is very much a social faux pas and she doesn't give a shit but then again she seems like a person who wouldn't use that information against us so Maybe that's just what she wants us to think. <laughs> all, 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 all the all the effective Cappadocian manipulators bank on the fact that no one expects them. Yeah, that, that's probably the case. Let's kill him, guys. <laughs> no way. No, no, no one expects the Cappadocian Inquisition. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so she takes it. She hands it off. She goes, "This sounds a. Uh, this sounds important. You might want to. My guys might want to look into that." Uh, yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah. That's not something you should be concerned with yourself with. So. Um, yeah, I was gonna say, let me in. Oh, I'll we'll get you settled of... down. I, I guess I can. I guess that's no problem to get you some temporary quarters, or until we figure out a place to, um, start uh, to. To make you comfortable. Um, I suppose you want to look out and seek out your Badoshian buddies. Oh yeah, I'll get around to it. I, I wanted to make sure to come by and make sure you were okay, because, you know, let's be honest, none of these guys have the potential that you do, so... <laughs> yeah. And again, she just absentmindedly insults all of you guys. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with yeah, that. I'm okay Bobby, with this guy. Yeah, I'm okay with this guy insulting me about that. But Labiana, oof. Oh, this is hard. In a sense, me? Labiana could be kind of torn in a sense. Like, half of her doesn't really care, but the other half of her, the, that that little part of her, the humanity that's still there, kind of just like, huh, okay. <laughs> what am I, chopped liver? <laughs> Fuck this. You're meant to be a clansman. <laughs> like, come on. So, uh, while this interaction goes, Nicodemus has been pretty much used to her antics for quite a while, and expectantly over some years he developed some subtle ways to divide, diverting her attention to uh, to proper directions. And he kind of like whenever she's not looking, he's like making all the gestures to, oh well, come down, guys. She, she's just she, that's just the way she is. Right. Giving evil eyes to Nicodemus. 
All right, so she, uh, think of damage, you eventually do divert her attention away from the group. You know, maybe you might want to go find um, Jose Ben Joser, the other, the big Cappadocian around here. Go find Camillus. <laughs> you know, yeah, I have business to discuss. And she's like, yeah, yeah, I'll see you later. <laughs> I, I put one of my hand on uh, Levina's shoulder and I say, don't listen to her. She's just an old bitch. When, I, I say that when she is not with us, by the way. I don't say it when she is in the same room. None of us have your potential, huh, Nicodemus? Sorry, can you repeat that? None of us have your potential, huh? <laughs> that she's always amusing to to be around and to have around. Um, she might actually she might actually be useful in a couple of things, but uh, I'm not sure how it plays into our current predicaments. Probably wouldn't. Out of character, did I still owe her a boon? Well, it was another Cappadocian. Or was it she that owed me the boon? Oh, no, it was the same Cappadocian, sorry, my mistake. No, Labiana, you owe her a minor boon. And a major boon. A minor and a major. To, yeah, to listen oh, to, for listening major. to her. The major, the major was to do his necromancy, yeah? Um, off the top of my head, I don't remember the exact circumstances. Uh, but you and Hatchet both her owe her a minor and a major boon. Oh, she Fra didn't ask for it. She didn't ask for it, you know. I'd forgotten yeah. all about it, actually. I had forgotten about it, so thank you, you for reminding you me. Guys, you guys should use your sheets. There is a boon section. It really helps. So I, I use that. Uh, to be fair, a canine doesn't remind of the until they really need it. Mm, so it is. may strike you as a surprise in the least convenient moment. Yeah, yeah, pr probably. Uh... We got the Tiberius meeting. Right, what when was it again? Tomorrow? Yes. yes. Uh, are we going to to walk to run into those goons again? Uh most definitely. I give it ninety-nine percent chance that we will. Uh hopefully it will be inside the building, not outside when they are trying to ambush us and intimate us to not go there. Yeah. We're, we're not going. We're not even going to make to the building. They're going to divert us as we go there. We need to. We need to figure out something. Uh, I have an idea for that. I cannot be present at the meeting with type uh, with the characters, but I can, however, be a diversion for your uh, his other vampires that have been keeping an eye on him. But, yeah, I mean, considering you can be near impossible to see because of your shadows, it can be very useful to have you around. Um, now, if Nicodemus, you and Het will go there, I think I should do something else somewhere else at the same time. I'm also quite tired mentally. If I be there, I'm pretty sure that the La Sombra or the Venture will for a for me, and the last thing I want is really breaking in that place and doing something wrong. We might okay. we might try several different diversions. Uh, La Biena and uh, Albina can be one of them, but we can also try and influence some mortals from uh, from the vicinity to. Uh, to spread some some convenient rumors that don't necessarily break the uh, science of the blood. So they take the bait and we have an opening. Definitely. I mean, we are going to... The... So as long as uh, Alvina is not seen by the, by the guy, our guy, uh, shouldn't be too much 
problem, but I don't think if she will want to show up in the human form. I think it's better if she stays as a ghost uh, shadow. Out of curiosity, real quick, was there any other male? Hmm? Um, let's see. No, that was the main, that was the big thing there. Okay, okay, just figured I should check. So while, while you guys do that, I think I will try to recruit some more cultists to the group. See if I can get more sheep following us. Okay, um, one full night passes. Um, during that night, uh, would uh, Obna be able to try to get in contact with the child of the Gangro? You can attempt to do so. That's going to be quite tough because you don't know how. Okay. Uh, she, she try to make some, uh, perhaps to ask some favors from her sire for, uh, after the, uh, the attack on the werewolves. Oh, yes, your sire. She's definitely going to hear about that. She's gonna want the whole to... story. She's how she's going to react. She's going to give it all, not hide anything. Uh, perhaps she's going to embellish her position and the position of her child is a bit. The, part, uh, the participation that they had in killing one of the werewolves. Perhaps she's going to hide the fact that uh, Mercutio died in one hit. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can say this. Mm -hmm. Child died in one hit while you survived without taking any damage. She is uh, obviously quite upset, pacing back and forth, shaking with anger. You allowed these werewolves to get away. How many of your faces did they see? I believe that they saw nearly all of us. And did they catch your sense? I am not to be able to tell. Probably. It was a dark, a uh, dirty alley. So, perhaps? I see. Well, there is a well. body. Perhaps the, the smell of the body disguise our own scent. I am not to be able to tell. Hopefully you are taking more thorough precautions during the day. Such such a failure is sure to come back to you. I fully expect it to do so. Until you atone for such a complete failure, you will get nothing from me. Only success is rewarded. That's going to cause her to clench her hands a bit. She... She feels that she's being slapped as during this. I see. Very well then. I return once I have one of the werewolves captive. See that you do. She 
she's going to leave and the moment that she's outside she's going to start storming off since she got nothing for her she's going to try a uh, roach papa roach ah papa roach um you put out the signal that uh, you need to talk to him and it usually takes several hours uh, in this time because those watching for such signals need to go find him and let him know what's going on. So it's you've got four or five hours until dawn by the time he comes back to you. And uh, you're waiting at the agreed upon spot. This would be a uh, plaza, well, a few blocks from your group haven. Close enough to safety that you feel um, good, and far enough away that he doesn't feel like he's walking into an ambush. And you're sitting there pretending to drink a cup of hot wine, uh, wrapping yourself in a cloak of shadows to be remain unseen. And he drops down uh, behind you and uh, taps your elbow from behind and then jumps backwards because he's fairly certain you're going to whip around uh, with uh, some pretty good strength and punch the air behind you. Yeah, after the one that she got from her side about uh, the possibility of being tracked by the wolf, she likely a bit on the edge. So she turns around with, uh, trying to backhand whoever's behind her. Yeah, so he ex expected this. He jumps out of the way and you hit nothing but air. But then you hear a voice. Oh, a little little jumpy tonight, are we? That, that, understandable, understandable. Uh, I have that effect on people. <laughs> so give me these wounds, you, but it is not you, you that had that effect on me. It was more recent news that I received. Well, uh, why don't you wrap us up, because uh, uh, I'll make myself visible. It's kind of rude for me to, to be talking like this to you. So uh, when your shadows extend and wrap around you, um, he appears, drops his obfuscate. Uh, he's wrapped loosely in a rough cloth burlap-like material. Um, it's quite filthy. Uh, it does do well to conceal his features, but if anybody got up up nice, close, and personal, um, his true nature would be easily seen. Thank you for coming. Um, approach. Do you remember when I shared with you the information about Sabil? About the discoveries that we made in Carthage? About the Tophets? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> quite disturbing that information was. We got a, uh, got quite a bit out of that. I wanted to ask you if you could share some information with me. Uh, about how I might get in contact with the child of... Um, Arctur, uh, Arcturius, I think his name is. Actian, thank you. Actian. All right. Oh, let's see. Let's see. Hmm. Well, not off the top of my head. Uh, I, a word reached us. I'm sure you know that uh, Ihamas has offered a sizable bounty uh, for assistance in that matter. Uh, yes. It's one of the reasons why it's hoping to reach his child. I understand that she could uh, be a useful tool in getting rid of this grand girl. Uh, yeah, true, true, true. Uh, let's see. 
honestly, I don't know much right now. But uh, I'll put out a couple of feelers and talk to my, my clan mates here and see what I can get get you. I, I do owe you for that uh, information, so this will make us even. I appreciate that. Thank you. He just uh, appears to vanish and uh, leaves. Okay, now gets up and she lets down the uh, the goblet of wine that she was holding on the seat, and she heads off back to the haven. All right. It is the. Uh, Next night, you guys have uh, regained a willpower point. Some of you had, may have had to heal another uh, level of aggravated oh. damage. Yes, five plus one. Oh, right. uh, actually, just before, um, I just realized I should still feed as well. Okay. Um, you know the roll and the difficulty, so go right on ahead. Uh, five, right? Oh, wait, no. It's going to be seven if I want a clean. Correct. Um, I'm also going to hunt after waking up. Uh, yeah, same. Okay. You guys can uh, all go ahead and do that. Oh, um, I'm going to need to make another roll. Uh, then. Okay. Boy. Oh, no. Uh, I'm going to go safe. Just take four blood. I roll two sepsis. So killing no one. Albina not, not having any luck with her feeding rolls. <laughs> um, people are just, they seem to be doubly wary of uh, dark haired women tonight. Yeah, Albano, you come back to the Haven, and you're you're pretty frustrated. You're just like, what the fuck? I can't. I've, I've never had such a dry spell in my life. <laughs> oh man, this is not your lucky week. Um. Uh, were you gonna say something? I forgot. Don't don't mind me. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so you guys have uh, quickly hunted. Um, if you hunted this night or last night, it is time for the party. So uh, Nicodemus and Hatchipset are going, as I recall. And the other three of you are essentially going to be running interference. Is that correct? No, not me. I will try to recruit more cultists to the ah, okay. uh, cult we have. Right. And how are you going to do that? Uh, I'm going to try to do the way Labiana did. Just uh, go to a, um, what is it called, agent audience? I okay, right. so you're gonna start uh, start trying to gather an audience. Yeah, yeah, and I I'm going to go to the people which our cultists are looking for. So it will be like pregnant woman and homeless woman, stuff like that. Women in need help. All right, so you begin walking the streets, um, talking to these troubled women, uh, preaching as you go. <clears throat> like you to give me a charisma and expression roll to okay. gather enough attention to bring these people into you. Um, oops. Charming special to help? Mm, no, because you're literally just trying to get their attention through yeah, flowery okay. words and saying uh, the stuff so that's going to catch their ear. I have no expression. You have no expression. Okay, so no. raw charisma, difficulty seven. Okay. Uh, 
seven. Uh, let's see. It was a normal fail. All right, people just no, they don't seem to be interested. Uh, can I trade again. Yeah, it'll be difficulty eight. Okay, can I spend the willpower? Yes, you can. Okay, I will do that. That was three successes. Ah, oh, there you go. All right, you get a small crowd. Um, men and women uh, off to. They're buying uh, the last bit of food and stuff from the street vendors. Yeah, uh, getting the last bits of uh, wine and water. Uh, making their way through the dark streets into the insulae uh, in the crowded valleys. And some of them have stopped to hear you speak. A small crowd, maybe six to ten people, okay. have stopped to hear what you have to say. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm going to preach about what our cult is essentially is. And, of course, I'm going to preach in a positive way, like, you know, we do that and this for a pregnant woman and a woman in need help, blah, blah. Right. What the world cult is about. So this is going try to, be, to make these people interested. This and is going I want to be to have, charisma and leadership. I want to have awe active. Okay, so uh, spend a point of blood. Yes. Roll your, I believe, manipula charisma and performance or manipulation and performance at difficulty I'm 7. Checking, I'm going to quickly check that because I don't remember. Presence, 235. Um, let's see, charisma performance difficult to seven. Yep. Okay. Um, charisma, charisma plus uh, performance. Yep. You need three to four yes. successes. Okay. I got three successes. Okay. Well, uh, a pretty good people. portion of the crowd um, is gazing at you raptly. Okay. Do you, do you want me to say my impression or are we going to skip that? I, don't know. I assume you want to be a charismatic preacher. Pretty much. Pretty much. All right. Charismatic. Your words hold extra importance to these people. They listen to you like a crowd of uh, religiously influenced um, listening to a tent preacher handle snakes. Um, so, charisma and leadership, how many dice do you want me to add? Like, I didn't get the older people, so how, how oh. do you how Roll, do you Just uh, add your presence dice. That the, These six okay. people are going to be the ones who potentially follow you back. Okay, charisma, leadership... Uh -huh. Plus five dice. What difficulty box? So? Uh, I don't know. Okay. I, it's going to be really... very depending on the person. So let me roll. Okay. Uh, oh, you will. Okay, you can roll. Uh, yeah. I don't know if my specialty applies, but yeah, charm specialty. Difficulty five. Okay. There's my leadership difficulty five. Holy shit. Holy shit. Wow. wow. It's not a botch, not but fine. you're you're starting to lose them. They're they're walking away. Crowd's like, uh, I don't know. Just I'm I'm pretty tired. They're starting to break to up. It? Is there a way to save this? Like get their attention back? Get their interest. Um you can roll a, a charisma leadership again at difficulty seven. Okay. That will get it. If you succeed at with if you get three successes, you get everybody back. Okay, that sounds fair. I'm rolling. Should roll. Oh. <clears throat> That's good. All right. And I have you uh, you see them walking diamond. away, and you. Raise the level of your voice, and from somewhere deep inside, inspiration strikes. Your words gather them back to you, and they follow you back to the temple. Uh, 
where they are brought in and runners go and collect their few meager possessions. They are brought forth to be given a hot meal and potentially a place to sleep. Now this takes three to four hours of your time. Uh, yeah, then I just don't do anything, uh, you know. All right. Or do minor stuff that is not important to say. Okay, so. You, uh, Nicodemus and, uh, Hatshepsut are going to the party, correct? Mm-hmm. Looks like it, yeah. Albina and Laviena are carefully watching the surrounding approaches, looking for signs of interference. Um, Labiana and uh, Albina could roll me a perception and awareness roll. Um, you each have your own way of extending your senses. Uh, of course, Labiana has her uh, homunculi that she sends out. Uh, Albana wraps herself in stealth and as a shadow and, and just travels unnoticed. Alright. Albana, you see nothing of concern. Laviana, um, through your uh, homunculi, um, you don't see any of the uh, supernatural, the vampires that you have seen in the past. Uh, they don't appear to be here tonight. Or if they are, they're up to something very, very subtle. Hatshepsut and Nicodemus, um, you arrive at his villa on the uh, Palatine Hill. Looking and... Out and for some uh, say that again? Looking around for our friends. They do not appear, appear to be here tonight. Uh, as usual, Tiberius has his uh, lictors with him. Um, his scribe, the bald-headed Egyptian woman, is there taking notes. The uh, His father, uh, his father-in-law, I should say, is there. His wife is there. His younger brother is there. Uh, and many clients. He has several dozen powerful clients uh, and many who are not quite so powerful. Men who are just loyal to him. They are all eating uh, from the feast laid out on the tables, uh, drinking uh, water and wine. How did, the, how did the two of you handle this? Uh, describe how you handled going to the party, how you handled talking to people. What do you guys do? Hmm. Nicodemus isn't his usual. Obviously, he greets the host with a um, with a with an appropriate uh, inquiries about himself and all the polite, polite things that are required. He compliments on the interior and the uh, and the uh, provisions given, as well as the ambience of the event. Um, as soon as the interactions are going, he um, he lets himself up on the. The, the the main chamber in, in where the all the guests are um, acquainted and he engages in some small talk uh, his aim is to figure out the current uh, uh, the current uh, developments and all the undertones that can be associated with it what kind of guests are there outside of the of the clients and the the, the tr and those trust all right. Uh, give me a charisma and politics roll. Another difficulty? Ah, um, six.
All right, yes, you succeed in taking the measure of the crowd and these men you're talking to. Uh, obviously, a number of them are military veterans. Um, all of them um, respect Tiberius's uh, oratory and his legal mind. Uh, some of them even served with him on occasion. You mentioned some. Does it mean there's like an, an higher than usual amount of military minds? Uh, well, again, the military was seen as an entry to politics. Yeah, that's fair. So, uh, uh, so yeah, a very large number of them did serve because uh, it was seen as a patriotic duty and as an, a good entry. So... But most of them uh, did not make it a career. They served some time and then came home and started their did their family business or what have you. Does it seem like they've all been victimized due to the land problems? No, these men have not been victimized. Uh, in fact, they're more likely to be among the victimizers. But they all agree that Tiberius is correct. They have enough sense to see just past their own nose. They, they very much agree that just because they were allowed to do it doesn't mean it was right to do it. Hmm, so he seems to be attracting the, the good kind of people. Um, what seems to be their mood considering the, the, the political development? Uh, they seem all seem quite concerned. Uh, Tiberius has not been able to push through his reform bill. Every time he tries, it gets vetoed before it even reaches a vote. There's a peculiar um, quirk to Roman law when it comes to that kind of the plebeian council. If a law is vetoed, it can never again be proposed. So every time it gets vetoed, he has to go change it and then repropose it. And the law started out really, really fair and very just. Um, all really, all it said was you will you will obey the law as written, and in fact, the the government is actually going to compensate you for the fact that you can no longer lie, cheat, and steal and get more land. And every time he's had to go back and rewrite it, it's gotten a little more punitive and a little harsher. Every single time, a little more punitive, a little harsher, yeah. a little more punitive, a little harsher. I can just imagine him gradually losing patience, like. Okay, fuck you guys. Um, does it seem that like they they does it seem like they're he, he's vetoed because he's Tiberius Gracchus or they're actually vetoing what he says? Um, the consensus amongst everyone you talk to is that it is being vetoed out of greed. No, but... Pa partly out of greed and partly... Um, what they say is, the way Marcus Octavius justifies this, is that Tiberius is doing things in a way that Rome... He is breaking the accepted norms of Rome to preserve the spirit of Rome. And Marcus Octavius and his uh, allies in the Senate disagree with his approach. So they're going to so they're going to brush against the norms of Rome themselves. So so him and his crew, they don't see it this way, but they're using the yeah. laws of Rome to break the spirit of Rome. And Tiberius is, is is going against the normal laws of Rome to preserve the spirit. So they've got competing I ideologies here. Neither one of them sees themselves as the bad guy. What if he changed his approach rather than bluntly stating that they're not allowed to do this and this? Maybe he should... Or 
phrase the laws to be more akin to their liking, but the actual crunch of the law would be to uh, prevent, prevent all the atrocities okay. that are the problem in the first place. Um, do you have a law rating? Do you, have, do you have more than a zero in law? One. Okay. Um, roll me wits plus law to discuss this with the crowd. And even Tiberius himself is willing to discuss this with you through the through the yeah, course sure. of the dinner. Sure. Let's let's put willpower into this. This seems like an interesting exercise. Okay. Two successes. So, um, both Tiberius and his father-in-law um, are discussing some of the finer points of his original agrarian reform. And you come up and you, you ask a few clarifying questions. And they begin to discuss um, the ins and outs of uh, exact the exact case law that they uh, were able to quote. Um, they talked about how they had gone over this for several months with some of the top legal minds uh, in Rome, of which um, uh, Claudius Pulcher, uh, his father-in-law, is recognized as perhaps the top legal mind at the moment. One of them, anyways. And they uh, talk to you for 15 or 20 minutes about uh, why, first off, about how it was illegal for the rich to do what they were doing. By Roman law, uh, for hundreds of years, you were no person was allowed to own more than 500 acres of public land. And what these men were doing was at first they had uh, bought them under false names and used shell uh, people to buy this land. And eventually they just quit doing that and just were openly um, occupying, not even really buying it, just going to occupy all this publicly owned land. And bringing in slaves to farm it for them. So you had these many rich people who owned thousands upon thousands of acres of public land uh, in, direct, uh, in direct defiance of Roman law. So they discussed how they wrote the law to say, under this you all agree that you will give back all of this excess land that you are not legally allowed to hold. You will not be punished for this in any way. In fact, we will compensate you for the loss of income. You will get money for the loss of your farming income because you're no longer allowed to have this land. And now this reclaimed public land will then be divided into parcels and used to provide land for the farmer, for the uh, men who had lost their families and their homes fighting for Rome. And of course... The object was not just to do to distribute the land. It was because you had to be a landowner to be a soldier in the Roman army. And they were slowly losing so much ground to these giant farming collectives that their armies were growing light and short. They could not field armies as like they used to. And they end the whole discussion with, I'm very glad that you see our point of view on this and you have agreed to help us uh, on this. Uh, would, do you have any insights to add? I think the crux of the problem is that 
um, that with how the legislation is formed that the vetoes are uh, in place and they they are the staple point of any discussion and the uh, the, the the ultimate tool to block any changes upon hearing them uh, not uh, not compliable to the to, um, to their to their convictions and their will to comply um, I think the problem is the, the the approach, your approach. You're against the overwhelming odds of uh, unwillingness to comply. Um, they won't. They won't uh, accept those terms. You well, need I'm glad you bring up the problem of the veto. Their language. You need to speak their language in a way. Um, offer them something because they know that their revenue that giving up the land will provide them compensation but in the long run it will it will be less profitable for them well do you understand we offered to pay them for losing the income of their illegally held lands yes but in their minds uh, they're going to get compensated and maybe they will make up the, uh, the amount of coin they make uh, for, uh, for the coming years. Um, but in the long run, they will, in their minds, they will benefit more from, the, from holding them. And uh, I don't presume to know those people, but perhaps in their mind, they think they know better what is better for Rome by thinking that they can steer and control the uh, the agrarian lands uh, for the better um, betterment of Rome, um, far be to to question the, their their motives at least. But um, but but my, my point is that um, perhaps your your reforms need to be more veiled and hidden under uh, different laws. I know this is not what you would wish to become of Rome legis legislative process, but perhaps this is the way. Because any anything you propose, they're just going to deny it. Well, I, I like I said, I'm glad you bring that up because I was elected to fulfill the will of the people of Rome, as was my fellow tribune, Marcus Octavius. And pardon me for a second. And he grabs a bell and he rings it and it, everybody stops and they come to gather along the central um, atrium area where he begins his speech. He says, uh, my family, my fellow Romans, everyone gathered here tonight, thank you for your attention and your loyalty. Tribunes are elected to serve the will of the people. It is the Senate and the people of Rome, not just the Senate. I have come to the conclusion that my fellow tribune, uh, Marcus Octavius, is no longer serving the will of the people. I have thought long and deeply about this and consulted many scholars. And tonight I have discussed this issue with several of you. Uh, what can be done? I have come to the conclusion that it will require a drastic action. There shall be no, no more compromise. I tell you this because I want you to be ready. Starting tomorrow morning, I am going to veto every traditional vote to open every institution of Rome. The treasury will no longer be open. The ports will not open. The law courts will not open. The markets will not officially open. Every vote to allow Rome to conduct business is going to be vetoed by me. You should prepare yourselves accordingly. Prepare yourselves and your households. The way the Senate can, can convince me to stop doing this is to allow me to hold a vote to recall Tribune Marcus Octavius. 
Such a thing has never been done before. But he no longer serves the people, and therefore he has no longer fulfills the spirit of being a tribune. And the people of Rome should be allowed to pull him aside, to cast him aside, and bring in forth one who will fulfill his duties. Thank you all for attending. I am sure you are eager to return to your homes and prepare uh, for the coming problems. Uh, that will be all. Please enjoy uh, what is left here, uh, but take care to protect yourselves and your homes. Interesting. Was there any any presence from his followers in terms of security? Um, they all traveled with their own guards, of course. Uh, it's quite dangerous to walk the streets of Rome at night with any kind of wealth. What? How are people reacting? How are the people around reacting to this uh, announcement? Um, they are shocked into silence. They anticipated a some sort of grand gesture, of course, but something on this scale, this has never been done before, never even been thought about before. But Tiberius is not, he doesn't bluff. So there, there's quite a bit of concern as they immediately, people immediately begin talking. Well, if it's going to be happening on such and such a day, we need to stock up on grain and wine. Um, I should go ahead and send carts out to such farms. And so they're already beginning to chat strategy. How do we survive the upcoming troubles? Um, how so, long is it going to last? So on and so forth. Hmm. Do, does, any, does, it, does it seem like there are any uh, almost like, you know, upset about it? A little. Um but they all trust that he's going to do the right thing. Does it seem like there's anyone who is actually sneaking out with the news? No. All trusted people? Uh, correct. These, these are all clients who have uh, proven their loyalty, including you guys. So uh, what kind of institution is that? Uh, you got to say that again. You got really soft there for a second. What, what institution? So, um, specifically. I didn't catch that again. Uh, basically, what, what specifically is going to be affected by what? You know. Ah, okay, that's better. Um, basically, anything that takes care of people. No money from the treasury. Um, that means no firefighting services, no wiggles looking out for fires. Um, they're not going to be allowed to open the beef markets. They're not going to be officially. They're not going to be allowed to unload and offload uh, goods going down the port to Ostia. Doesn't he fear that he might get get assassinated by I don't know people? That's what the lictors are for. Um. I'm she just going to, but also understand, tribunes are considered sacrosanct. You're not allowed to lay a finger on them while they're in office. And this was mm -hmm. a respected tradition of Rome for approximately 400 years now. I mean, you mm -hmm. also were supposed to march to Rome with an army, but they did it later. Well, it, not for a while uh, yet. <laughs> Well, yeah, the I'm thing is, is, he's already impeding on another sanctuary thing. They might just decide he's not sanctuary enough. They might. But, um... Um... I'm going to try and quickly get out of this. We could 
essentially use it by offering our services to all these people. Yeah, let's talk to him. Uh, what do you have in mind in terms of offering your services? Because the fact that he needs to be protected is like undoubtable. Well, beyond that as well, it seems like the kind of it um bleh, that we can potentially help with. We can potentially provide various things like yeah, perhaps uh care that um won't be accessible while everything's going down. Whether as healing or as uh well, we got the We can do a case and do some policy work without help. We can well, yeah, extend that to uh anyone who needs it among these this these kind of folks. Well, our target, well, our concern is him primarily. He, he's the kind of man who would appreciate, who appreciates those who help his followers. Um, I, I think, I think at this point we need to offer something solid rather than just sneak and vague enough. Do, do you mean military presence? Um, like bodies to protect his household, um, or just commodities and supplies. Supplies, or I don't know. Uh, if um, out of character, actually, would um medical places be, be among the institutions normally affected by this kind of thing? Me medical facilities. I mean. A little, but they're not. They're not held in particularly high regard, and that's a leftover from Cato's time. Um, they're still uh -huh. they're still regaining their respect. Hmm. So the thing is that. We should expect the need to to hunker down, but we sh it, we shouldn't display it overtly. Now, what can we propose solid to him? To like um, you've spoken about appreciating gestures. Uh, I think the fact that we're in his trusted circle means that we're expected to carry our own weight in this contribution. So. It, need to be something extra. Fair. Perhaps. Hmm. Perhaps. Um, yeah. Words. Perhaps we could. Um, Brain, please. Start working again. Um, perhaps oh. actually, there's um, okay, my brain just turned off for a second. Uh, um, ba basically, Hats just admits that she's unsure. Uh, well. Okay, uh, Nicodemus would actually like to speak to uh, Tiberius if he's not overcrowded by now. 
Uh, there is a crowd. It's going to take, it takes a little bit of time to uh, wait for the line to thin out and work your way up to him. Um, by the time you get there, he's starting to look a little bit tired. Uh, it's getting a little bit late. And he says, uh, yes, uh, Nicodemus, correct? Yes. Yes. Um, um, what can I do for quite, you? You, you look uh, first the pleasantry, then the concrete. You look quite drained. Would you like a bit of a sooting wine that uh, that my uh, college of Medici are excelling with? It helps to rejuvenate the body, clear up the mind for the upcoming struggles. No, I think not. I think uh, no. I think I will refresh myself with some water uh, before I go to bed. This is fair. I just wanted to um, well congratulate you on the courage. This is a very bold move to declare such a war front upon uh, upon the uh, obviously uh, flawed. Um, politicians of Rome. However, I just wanted to express my concern whether the defense measures you wish to employ us to protect your yourself in this upcoming days are sufficient. Many people would not uh, like the course of action you aim to take. Well, I appreciate your concern, uh, and I would be lying if I said I did not feel uh, a little bit of fear myself. Uh, I've taken more precautions than you might think uh, regarding my own safety. This is fortunate. My, my, my initial thought was that, like, was that uh, even though the the tribune's post is sacrosanct, some might see your actions as uh, sacrilege and would choose to act upon it, despite the the centuries-long uh, God's tradition uh, pertaining to this. To this. Yes. Well, I have more than a hundred men. Uh, in and around my properties, uh, men who are loyal beyond all question, uh, veterans of the uh, Numantine Wars uh, in Spain, uh, men I personally saved from slavery or worse. Is, is it, is it, um... Is it incorrect for me to ask what are your plans for the upcoming days? Uh, is, is, is your declaration uh, due to start tomorrow at the earliest convenience? I believe it's going to be the day after. Hmm. You Do will you need plan? time to prepare your household. Certainly, but among my priorities are is your safety as well um as it stands i am curious what are your plans otherwise as to this is this business as usual or do you plan to um, extract any kind of extraordinary travel retro no i tomorrow i shall travel to the senate and i shall tell them what is going to happen. It shall be business as usual for me. I must project an aura of strength and confidence. I must let the people of Rome know that I trust them. I trust that they remember the traditions of what is Rome. Understand, I don't do this for my own glory. You know that. Of course. If you were you you wouldn't be making this statement this is a bold move for the for the correct direction it will take a lot from you and if you succeed you will change Rome but it 
you're essentially making a sacrifice of yourself for Rome. Let us hope it doesn't go that far. I hope so too. Me and my me, uh, me and my friends are bent to uh, to ensure your safety and that you um, are successful in your uh, endeavors. And uh, we will try to offer any assistance given our resources and possibilities. I very much appreciate that. Uh, your loyalty and touches me in ways you cannot know. Hmm. Should, should you require any extra assistance in ways that in ways of insight that perhaps are um, may turn out troublesome um, do not hesitate to send for us um, we will be doing our best to adjust to the, for the, the upcoming situation of course. Um, leave a note with my scribe to make sure that we know how to get a hold of you quickly. Of course. I bid you good night, Tribune. Right. Good night. Uh, as you begin to walk away, the uh, woman walks up to you and she's holding a there's a, a actually a servant next to her that is handing her fresh um, slate tablets that she's making markings on with chalk. And she says, uh, uh, the uh, Tribune said your name was Nicodemus, right? Uh, I'm uh, supposed to get your, your address or some way to get a hold of you quickly. Uh, of course. Um, and Nicodemus provides her with the address to the cult's uh, okay. seat. She, you see her chalking it down. She's writing in Latin very quickly. Um, just as a note, when I see that Nicodemus is talking to Scribe, um, Hat is going to not be like obviously staring, but he's she's going to get a bit closer so that she can perhaps overhear at least part of uh, part of what's being said, and you know just get a sort of idea what's going on. Okay, yeah, if the crowd is breaking up, um, you can still move about pretty freely and unnoticed. So you're kind of casually, you know, leaning back, listening uh, against a household uh, wall or something. And uh, she takes down your description of where it's at. The That's near this square by this statue. Um, so many feet from uh, the aqueduct here and here, and she's taking all the directions down. Uh, she says, uh, did you have anything else that uh, I might need to note before you retire for the evening? This is all. Uh, very well, sir. Thank you for your support uh, from my master Tiberius. Enjoy your night. Um, Nicodemus obviously relays all of this to Hatshepsut. Um, it seems that we're going to need to have eyes wherever we can, uh, if it's possible, mm. to, get, to have anyone of, of our contacts, of our servants to um, be witness to how he proclaims it. Mm. At this point, I feel like we can probably relax scrutiny of the scribe as well. While it, I'm still um, not, I'm not still not completely uh, confident. Uh, well, I suspect that my initial fears may have been overblown. But we will see.
Oh yes, this issue. That's bound to be Enigma for a while, unless we want to act. I, I will just say that if she were who I thought, if she was what I thought she was, it would be unusual for her to so freely, um, associate, uh, so freely uh, associate with the war. So, uh, so willing to shake things up. Perhaps is just waiting for the right time to play her hand. True, true, but I still I probably I probably don't want to with uh, my cat my clan's issues and my own issues. We should probably uh, head back, start making plans. Let's let us let us do this. I've no idea how many of those. Even though the congregation seemed very trusted and tight knit, I am uncertain if any of them were actually contacts for someone else. I'm quite sure that our friends would have eyes and ears on any event tied to Tiberius. Perhaps would be wise to observe his household during the night. Perhaps, and yeah. During the day as well. Out of curiosity, beyond all the, uh, beyond all the, uh, politics and, uh, well, beyond all the self-interest, what what's your own opinion on uh, just from a moral perspective on uh, what he's doing right now? Who are you I, asking that to? I, I think he's driven to doing things he doesn't want to by the circumstance. It's like. He wants, he wants to change the system for the benefit of, uh, of, of the whole populace, but fails because others are unwilling to. And um, I recall that during the initial meetings, he was adherent to even thinking that someone might bore him ill will because he considered them to be noble noble executioners of a san uh, uh, of sanctified uh, elevation to the senatorial status and now he's saying that another tribune is unfit to, uh, to to play his role and he actively wants to abuse the system uh, he fought to be, uh, he, he fought to be righteous do you think he's right to do so though Well, you know me. If the law is wrong, fuck it. But the question is, who makes the judgment? In this particular case, it seems that he has the evidence and the backing of, uh, and the backing of reason to make this a a partially uh, justifiable action. Indeed. I was just interested to hear your thoughts on the matter. Um, but for the record, I do concur, actually. Uh, when things are getting, well, when you cannot do things the right way, when you cannot do what's necessary properly, what other choice do you have than to do it improperly? His actions may very well resound through the ages. It, it very much depends on how things will roll out. Perhaps it will die down. I hope it will. And it will, in the sense that it will not impact the Rome as a whole, as far as the 
as the as, as the turbulent turbulence around the veto itself is concerned perhaps it will take the the aimed the the aimed effect the target effect the the effect he wants but something tells me that it's going to become very messy and it's a good thing that he acknowledges that it may very well be his doom um but it may sp spiral out of control. Well, there's few things we can ever have complete control of. We simply do what we must. But I, God. I think I think it's just uh, I think it's just uh, our it's our just our prompt to uh, just have eyes on everything and just notice things as they roll out. Um, I think the f starting from now on, we should be uh, rising up and uh, first thing we do is to learn about recent changes and see if there's, if there isn't anything happening rapidly. Mm -hmm. Of course. Oh, let's head back. And as of character, I need to go check, see what's happening with uh, food, so I will yeah. be right back. I think it's a good time to take a 10 minute break, guys. Sure. Okay. Okay, so we're back. Um, <clears throat> you guys are leaving the party. Uh, and that means... Well, I was going to shift back to uh, Labiana, but she's a little bit busy at the moment and can't really talk. So... Um, I will say Albina is going to get this one. As uh, everybody's headed back... Uh, Tyrannus uh, comes up to Albina and says, uh, 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 Madam, Madam Albina, I, uh, uh, I've heard something terrible, and I think you guys need to know about it uh, as soon as possible. The silversmith that forged our special weapons the other night is missing, and his shop is completely destroyed. She thinks on it for a second before she nods. Let me see. They move fast. They're able to track him down that quickly. I mean, we have means to assert information. Why shouldn't they? Thank you for this notice. It might be best if we prepare secondary havens around the city for the future boy and i will be right back well they only i was the one who went and paid the blacksmith so do you think i should go ahead and uh, Hi. uh yeah basically make yeah. myself oh take myself away from here i do believe you should yes i believe it's going to be for the best lay down for it Tyrant. Shouldn't Tyrant instead to Labiana? <laughs> well, I I have only a few things. Um, I'm going to find a a spot to uh, lay low then, and hopefully be able do to weather the storm here. Do you require some money to secure yourself temporary lodgings? Um, yeah, I uh, I don't really have have that. I uh, lost my day job, of course, uh, after Carthage. I mean, it's going to hand him over a a, a, a box of coin. Okay. Well, this will serve to rent me some uh, some dark cheat pobble of some kind. I'll find something. I might have to leave the that. city walls though. If you need more, talk to me and I will do my best to provide. Okay. I'll try to send somebody. I I don't want to lead them back to you. If, if they're going to find somebody, they're only going to find me. That brings a smile to her face. She's pleased to see that um, Labiana has chosen well, has chosen her goose and her child well. And 
that just lets him run along and do his stuff. Uh, he goes and he makes sure to make a big stink about how he's uh, leaving the area and he wants to say goodbye to some old friends and so on and so forth, making sure people know he is not in this area anymore. Uh, of course, this is all a, to you guys, uh, transparent uh, ruse to draw people away from your group haven. Um, although, Albina, your suggestion that uh, you prepare some backups uh, was probably a damn good idea. So... What do you guys do? I assume we all meet up after the meeting and the Caracas state ends. We need to have, have some eyes on this villa and preferably on his person. Like I mentioned, that makes you feel for his safety. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, we didn't share this yet, but he basically decided to go all out on offensive. He desires to veto every, not only just legis legislation, but all the business, the conduct. And basically, he's going to paralyze all Rome by his, by his tribune veto powers. That is going to likely cost him a lot of enemies. I see. That'd be an enemy if, kind of widened. If that is the case, I might be able to actually make use of this. If we can create a, a movement among the masses in support of him, we might be able to pressure the Senate to side with him. I'm not quite on this. Okay. So like, mm, uh, GM, how fast the, how popular is the, uh, what, uh, uh, how fast the news about what is being spoke on the Senate floor is distributed among the populace? Uh, the populace really only hears um, about the big stuff. A lot of the small stuff and small laws and stuff. That they're codified and they're public, but most people don't have access to it. So, so would it bring... So would Albina's uh, idea about highlighting the stuff make people understand what is the reason for it? Um, bring merit? Um, they are going to... Well, what they typically do is they give public speeches to explain. And they will publish um, letters that are read out by public newsreaders in the city. And you guys are familiar with this tactic from being part of the campaign. Uh, and Tiberius is actually quite good at it. Uh, word of mouth is the way things are spread here. So a, a good uh, a good public speaker is uh, well paid. Are you guys still there? Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. Thinking, uh, is it possible yeah. to organize any sort of eyes that we have on him all the time to uh, learn if anything happens to him as fast as possible? Uh, probably not all the time, but certainly when he's in the big public spaces and. Uh, of course, at night, if one of you guys 
uh, is going to have to do that. Because you know what to look for. Mm -hmm. So I guess for daytime, we would hire some, some underlings to look for us, tools, um, paid servants, and during the night, we'd go, one of us would go to Charlie ourselves. Yeah. Um, Agatha by herself has the uh, money required uh, to hire people for this. So combined that you guys as a group certainly have enough money to hire a few people to be in a public crowd when he gives a speech and, and watch him as he goes into the Senate uh, and things like that. Well, that's a good idea to hire uh, people to spread the word, uh, graffitis and the likes, uh, to create Kali, not in support of his idea, and uh, not exactly explaining his idea, but rather calling for the overthrow of the Marcus uh, Aurelius of the Tribune. Uh, create a sense of urgency to his request. Create, make the create an idea that there is an unrest uh, in his favor growing. Um, yeah, that's a good idea, and I think we should pay in mind to keep in tune with whatever uh, Gracchus says about him, because he may not necessarily say he's, he's like Carmen Rome, but maybe he has a lot to say, like, kind of be compatible in the narrators. On the other hand, there might be worth in being the people who will, who will say things that Gracchus himself would never stoop so low as to say. If all else fails, bribery and uh, dominate is always a means of getting support from the senators. Look, uh, here's the problem. The problem is that uh, we're dealing with something that has uh, never been in precedence in Rome. Uh, it, it's completely new. If by some mis misspoken word or too much great success at, uh, at spreading false propaganda uh, or, or spreading propaganda against Marcus, he dies or gets wounded, the blame is going to instantly go to Gracchus. And we want to avoid that. So I guess we should be tempered at this stage. And the and thing is to monitor if they're not trying to assassinate our tribune. Worst case scenario, we can find a scapegoat to take the fall. Talking about scapegoats taking the fall for the actions of others, I have met with. Um, Tyrannus, he mentioned that the uh, silversmith that he hired for our weapons has been going has gone missing, and his shop has been trashed. How oh, this thing? Oh, this was a nasty business. Do we intend to track him, or do we assume he's already been seized by the werewolves and gutted? He most certainly has been by the werewolves. Um, Tyrannus has uh, made his way out of the city. He is afraid that he would be the next target, seeing as he is the one that made the deal with the, the silversmith. I have provided him with some money to secure himself lodgings. Where was the silversmith located? Was he in the middle of the city or on, on the outskirts? 
Um, he was located with a lot of the other um, jewelry area. Uh, I'm honestly not sure exactly where that was. I would assume it's somewhere near uh, one of the uh, rich forums. And in fact, I can get you a name here in a minute. I gotta open my file. Yeah, there are there are many forums. Um, there is, in fact, a forum that specializes on, actually on the Palatine Hill during the day. Um, the money changers uh, have their own special little section, and um, they are always getting their money at the special forum uh, that's nearby. I don't have it written down. I have to check. Um, do we know what is the what is the werewolf's general agenda towards towards humans? You have no idea. But have there been known violence uh, or encroachment of uh, werewolves versus humans? Werewolves are regarded as a unknown killing machine mystery. Would the gangrel know ab more about this? Eh, maybe. A couple of them might. Most, most gangrels don't actually try to avoid, actually try to avoid werewolves because, you know, they're like not being dead. A couple of them do know more than my vampire, so... Yeah, there's not... Lore on werewolves is going to be extremely hard to find. Attempting to, to get someone who knows and is willing to talk about werewolf lore uh, is an incredibly difficult task. Just just going up to any gangrel, most of them are going to say... You know, look, they kind of do stuff with wild animals, and they eat like wolves, and yeah, just don't fuck with them. But more to the point, if your maker's mark was found on a weapon jammed into the chest uh, of somebody you knew and possibly even loved, wouldn't you want to go talk to that person? Like, who made this weapon? Or who, who did you make this weapon for? Who bought it? Where does this person live? Did I lose you guys? Are you still there? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I'm eating. <laughs> yes, okay. So I thought for a second I might have been talking to Thin Air there. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's uh... Getting any kind of information about werewolves is a task that's going to take a long, long time. And possibly even sure. taking one alive. Which we don't have. I suppose, assuming the 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 silversmith has spilled the beans, where would uh, Tyrannus be most likely to be found based on the knowledge being given to the silversmith? Probably. 
does it is there a direct link to one of our havens or the group haven or or whatever i'm so the first thing is to know our enemy is it like a whole pack of wolves or maybe just I mean... it's uh it's two three werewolf or something like that i mean look between everything we did but tyrannus also was and considering he came and left our haven several times, traces can be connected to us with persistent investigation from the very side. There is easily, I mean, not easily, but there is definitely several possibilities that these variables can investigate uh, successfully and find our haven. It is not an out of question thing. It's definitely possible. Now. They might not be persistent enough to get that information, but they might also be. Who knows? And I mean, look, one of those werewolves had some magical aura shit going on, uh, in character wise speaking. So, you know, who knows how crazy powerful and, you know, focused they are about doing something. Uh, so, yes, this, while we are in this place, we are not really safe. That's why I'm asking, because uh, the key point is to know how many, how big threat are we facing? Is it a whole group of all, a whole pack, a whole horde, or is just one, one of them? being bent on avenging their their fallen friends well, the ones we encountered that the way that were we encountered we fought we against four werewolves in that uh sort of scuffle and one of them died mm -hmm. three was left they were four total we killed one of them one of them ran away uh, the other one just showed up, but we ran away, and the uh, third one just, well, it was a messy case, Was but he's still alive, too. Uh, so, yeah, they are, at, at best, they are a pack. At worst, they can be more than that. What if it is, I'd suggest we meet, we prepare secondary havens around the city. Yeah, I I will not probably come here for some time, maybe several years, I don't know. I have a domain in Rome, I think somewhere I can go. Avoid the group haven and just leave some informant that would have eyes on whether someone approaches or not. Preferably hire them through a proxy or something. Just to be safe, I can set up walls around our, our room. Mm, probably wouldn't be effective enough. Eh, I wouldn't be so certain. He seems to be fairly strong. I will need more blood. No, no, no. Uh, let's, let's not underestimate what you're fighting. Speaking of which, uh, I'd like to go feeding tonight. Um, say that again? Uh, I would like to feed tonight. Okay, go right ahead. Yeah, I also attempt to do the same. Okay. Is this another, is this another night? Uh, this is after all the parties and everything. Okay. Uh... I will hunt too. I got some options for you. All right. So, yes, you guys remember there were three wolves remaining alive. You think? Uh in the pack you fought 
two nights ago now. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, three nights ago now. There is a two. Anyways, it's been two days. So, two days, three nights, something like that. Anyways. Things have gotten quite busy. Uh, you are sending your personal servants and the uh, cult members out to help look for alternate havens. Um, tapping your allies, your contacts. Two more days go by. Um, so you wake up, and the word on the street is that Tiberius has asked the Senate to allow him to schedule a vote to recall Marcus Octavius. He was denied. As of this morning, he has vetoed every piece, every for, every what has always before been a formality. Um, but he has begun vetoing every attempt to open Rome for any official government business. Okay. The uproar is big. Yeah, this is huge. Cats. Cats. This is huge. All of the markets can't open. People can't um, get money exchanged. Uh, the ports won't open. Goods can't. The the flow of goods and services into and out of Rome has slowed to a trickle. I mean, it was going to happen, so let's see how this goes. Is, is public anger directed in any particular direction? At the Senate. Okay. okay. Well, is, is there one man to blame? Does the populace know it is due to the veto? No. The uh, populace, from what you have heard over the past several days now, as we're going to go ahead and say it's been several days, the populace is angry that the Senate is attempting to tell the plebeian assembly what they can and cannot do. So, I mean, do we, do we want to do anything about this? Like, hang on, I'm going to roll it in, because I feel like we don't have an option, so we should roll it in. Oh. I, 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 if we should start trying to spread rumors to paint Gracchus in better light. I try to illuminate the fact that it's about agrarian reforms and like saying, well, they're going to go for the, for your land next. But, but, but for a lot of people, this may not mean shit. They're all concerned with their business. So maybe we should spend it about business and well, making money as a general. Or, alternative, you can just spin it as the Senate is letting their greed ruin every. You know, that the Senate is letting that is letting everything go to ruin by refusing to accept a challenge to their own greed. Yes, yes. I think that's our main concern. People, want, people in Rome don't care shit for agrarian reforms because they don't feel it, they, it touches them directly. It should probably be spun in the way that uh, 
it refuses the good change that uh, that impacts whole Rome, but I have no idea what the angle is. That I, think, I think that the main concern that we should have is the possibility that the people who turn on Gracchus, they might figure that uh, if something had to happen to him, that means that he'll not be able to veto the markets and all anymore, and they'll be able to open again. That, what I believe should be the main, uh, preventing that should be the main priority, I believe. Make sure that any anger of the public is directed toward the Senate and towards Marcus. Okay. Uh, sounds good enough. Yeah, maybe we can just start spreading it so Marcus's fault because they're all greedy bastards and mm. is the, it is his action that is leading to all of this. Mm -hmm. Well, you are just talking about doing successful propaganda. Let's just be done with it. It's all about fake news, spreading, you know. It isn't exactly fake news, guys. If you if you keep telling something to people's faces every day, constant, constantly, at some point they should start being brainwashed. So I think we should just connect our resources, hire some people, send them through the city and just you know push a little bit the folk common folk towards the direction we want them to be and some of them are already going towards the direction we want them to be it's not i mean look if this goes you know, for more days, weeks, there will be economical crush, I assume. Uh, and, you know, money doesn't flow. People can feed themselves. And hungry people are dangerous people. Yeah, and how does the, the, the populace view the agrarian reforms? The populace in Rome, does it seem like they, they don't care about it? Or oh, they love it. It, it passed easily it easily passed the uh plebeian assembly was made into law and then marcus octavius is like nope this is vetoed yeah, yeah. because it's so, yeah. in favor of plebeians right yes and we we can focus on the, this is you know this is the kind of thing people that political groups will often appeal to even when there's no justification for it, and we are, and in this case there is actually justification for it. Uh, present presenting the opposition as the elites trying to keep things out of the uh, you know salt of the earth you know average law abiding citizen. Uh, pretty much. I mean, look, I think the population of Clavians are much more than the population of elites, right? Patricians, naturally. Um, so, considering that this thing works in favor of plebeians, as long as this uh, stuck uh, in the economy continues, plebeians will become more agitated, not towards our side, our men, but towards uh, Marcus. Okay, um, if you have academics, I would like you to roll intelligence plus academics. Okay, I have Ooh. academics. Six. You are attempting to recall a piece of Roman history. Uh, da, da, da. Intelligence. Okay. Difficulty three. What? Six? Six. Six, okay. What did I get? Two. Okay. Oh, five. Jeez. Nice job, Alina. Showing that Roman... <laughs> A lot of <laughs> yeah, well, you know the the one the one born Roman in the uh, coterie happens to uh, get the most successes on them knowing things about Rome. <laughs> yeah, 
fits with the narrative. RNG fits with the narrative. Very rare thing to happen, you know. All right. If you got at least two successes, you can recall this. This actually happened, okay? Back before the days of the plebeian council and tribunes, um, the Senate had passed several laws, and it was such such negative impacts on the plebeians that, as a as a group, the entire population of the plebeians in Rome walked away, got up and left Rome, all of them. And they stayed out of Rome, refused to work. They essentially went on strike, refused to harvest any food, refused to work, refused to do anything. Until the Senate repealed those laws and uh, helped them establish the plebeian council and gave them the force of law. Pretty much all the, you know, baseline. It, it, it was not civil war. There was no violence. They literally were just like, Hey, you guys do it yourself. <laughs> We're not doing it. Can it even work, given the current social distribution in Rome and dependency of on uh, sla slaves? Well, sure it work. I think it would work. Uh, plus, there are no armies in Rome, right? There's no army near Rome at the moment. So Correct. No there armies are, in Rome. There are lictors. Yeah, but I mean, lictors are um, not secular. I mean, I think, how many lictors are there? Approximately. Chris? I, there's enough. I don't know. Each yeah. position gets a, a set of lictors. It's not yeah. an army. I mean, it's a couple yeah, hundred tops. Army. Yeah, yeah. So, peasant people folk aggravated and ready to throw stones and other shit, they will definitely get past those lictor line easily. We are not talking about, you know, them having SMGs or whatever in the modern oh, era. Oh, but but it, it wasn't a question. It wasn't the question this in this direction. The question was, if all the plebeians revolt and stop doing shit, will they, will uh, Rome uh, be paralyzed considering their dependency on slaves? That was the question, not whether they would oh, okay. lose the lictors. And even if Rome has uh, to do so, there is also the other cities that are part of the Republic that might be able to supply what needs even if the people in Rome stop the, the production. Well, but I have a question out of character. Does Agatha know anything about the agitated people outside Rome that wants to be count as um, like part of Rome, you know, like a plague, you know, whatever. Does I got to know anything about that state right now? The state of the people outside Rome? No. The state of the Did people want... outside Rome is that outside of the immediate Latin communities within about a 10 mile radius of Rome, they are perceived as client states. They have obligations to Rome. They are not allowed to vote. Some people want Rome to give them citizenship. Some people are happy with the way things are, and some people want to be fully independent. There is no consensus one way or the other. Okay. So, if you think about this first internally, I do not think that there is any law in Rome saying that every slave in Rome is belonging to the Senate. So in, in the, in, if that's not the case, then plebeians who have slaves of their own, they can simply tell their slaves to stop working uh, and they would obey the order, which means if plebeians decide to stop doing anything productive, then the, their slaves would stop too. Now, patricians, most definitely have their own slaves and maybe they can use it, but there isn't enough patrician with enough slaves to make Rome as product productive as the plebeians uh, would, uh, would make. Um, 
question regarding slaves, I do not think uh, they will not hinder the plebeians from uh, stop working. Uh, oh, okay, just to be completely sure on the registration process, the entire of the problem is that the the Tribune Marcus is vetoing Greg uh, Tiberius's reforms, right? Correct. Okay, we need to illuminate this fact to the populace and spin it that the Tribune's Tribune's policies are being denied and the the plebs are being ignored. Yes, and it's uh, Marcus. No, sorry, not Marcus. Uh, uh, yeah, Marcus, yeah, Marcus. And Marcus is essentially not doing his tribune um, role. He's not fulfilling his role. Um, Your damn job. Yeah, he's not doing his damn job. And because of that, the money, the economy is not flowing right now. Because of that, our man, uh, Tiberius, has to do this. Like something similar to that, we need to spread that kind of propaganda among the people, uh, people that that are on the street, plebeians. Um, oh, also, externally speaking, I mean there are some town, uh, cities um, that has folk who wants to be citizens of Rome, but they are not. Uh, some people, some folks, they do not want to be citizens; they want to stay as they are. And some people want to, some city, uh, folk has, wants to be independent from Rome. So if outside uh, factors tries to help Rome, if Plavians stop producing stuff, uh, then there c can be another chain reaction of aggressiveness between client states and uh, other states and whatnot. Um, At this so, yeah. point, there is a insistent pounding. You can hear it um, coming from the front area. Um, uh, a messenger strides in, and he basically completely ignores any attempt to stop him. Okay. Uh, he walks in. There's no. He's not armed or nothing like that. And he, whichever one of you is closest, uh, he pulls a uh, piece of cloth out, like uh, a scroll, hands it over to you, uh, turns around without a word, and walks away. Oh, I think maybe for once uh, that'll be me this time. Okay. Labiana, you open it up, and it's uh, it says, uh, the first citizen uh, invites you to discuss your progress uh, in two hours' time. First citizen. Huh. Well checked. Labiana, Labiana turns to the others. A message from the prince. He wishes to see us in two hours. To uh, quote. Check on our progress. Okay. Uh, cool. That's just well. Well, we can't deny him. Oh yeah, we can't. I mean, this this sounds fair. Uh, he already gave us enough time without doing a briefing or whatever. Um. Yeah. Just before we leave to go there, I just want to say my final words. Um, I think that uh, in the long game, this crippling of Rome will either end with bloodshed or a peaceful uh, win on our side. Because, as I said, plebeians are much more densely packed than the patricians and uh, lictors are not large enough to stop the plebeians, and there is not really any army near Rome that can just come in and stop the plebeians. Um, so, so far things looks like in our favor. 
I'm sorry, I, I'm just coming to fast forward to tell her and the uh, no arm of the body there. Man, your microphone sounds like you are totally muffled. Sounds like you have something over it. Maybe it's because, I don't know if you're leaning away from the mic or something. That might be. I literally can't lean away from the mic, so... Check the cable again. Is the cable in properly? Yeah, that's good. I was, now, right I was saying, having in the mention of uh, not having armies marching into Rome to kill uh, plebeians and uh, popularis, I'm just having flash forwards to Sulla. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? All right. Um, he meets you at his villa, uh, close by to the uh, Capitoline Hill, and you are all uh, invited in. There's a few attendants. It is him and uh, Trifosa. She is a monkey. Yeah. 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 Right. Um, he invites you to sit around a table and says, uh, I'm glad you all could uh, clear time in your busy schedules to come and see me. Uh, he gestures towards some servants who come out and they're, uh, uh, beautiful uh, young men, young women, and girls. Uh, they all come in. They're all dressed uh, with very little. Uh, basically just jewelry. Um, they come forward. Their eyes are cast down. Uh, they all appear to be quite obedient to Camillus. And he walks up and he caresses all of them, plainly enjoying the feeling of, of their subservience and touching them. And he says, uh, does the thirst trouble any of you? Do you desire uh, to slake yourself on blood so that we may converse civilly? I refuse a, 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 such a ch kind and gentle offer from you, my friend. Pick. Take your choice. Albina, you have a flaw. Yes. That doesn't that get much attention, sense. unfortunately. But in this case, there are several young, very young, that look completely innocent and pure, untouched, demure, and you feel the beast rise up in you and say, Take him! Take him now! Take that one! Eat it! Kill it! Uh, I believe that's a self-control roll. Let me double check. Yep, self-control, please. Well, as part of Lovey and a try, she can't help but kind of... Uh, you're good. Occasionally yeah, just... Cast her eyes over. He's feeling a bit peckish. <laughs> uh, he notices. He says, "Please, by all means, uh, I wish you to be comfortable. We must be focused and able to discuss things without distractions. Take your pick. Any of them. They will eagerly submit to you." Thank you, my friend. You are too kind. Recognizing this uh, as a potential faux pas, uh, Nicodemus uh, 
engages in, in in this as well, though he only takes one blood point. It's not like he really needs it because he's been keeping uh, sated over the passing nights, but he wishes to comply with good manners. It's offered, so he takes it. Well, I guess I have to do the turn now because everyone else is doing it. I will take one blood. Uh, you notice that they, even to Labiana, as horrifying as her appearance is, they only focus on your teeth. They've been conditioned to crave the pleasure of the uh, vampiric kiss. Um, even the young one uh, can't help but uh, stretch out to touch them as they're coming down to bite. They all want it. When you have all uh, satisfied yourselves, uh, he invites you all to sit down, and he sits down as well. He says, uh, It's good to see that uh, you have managed to hold yourselves together this long in uh, trying circumstances. Maybe you could uh, give me a summary of your progress. What have you done since uh, we last spoke? And how have you fulfilled uh, the goals that were given to you? My, uh, Gracchus is well on his position, uh, well secured his position as a tribune, as I ensure that you are well aware. He has been seeing trouble in pushing his agenda. The other tribune, Marcus, has been blocking him. While we... Uh, well, I'm not sure if you could count it as what you did in a circle yet. We are consistently... Well, we are... He, he is aware of us and on friendly terms with us. And we are close enough that we can... Eat, should It shouldn't be too difficult to go for go into uh, a further relationship when you say he's aware of you I know I asked you to make yourself part of his uh, life how aware is aware if you're asking if the silence of the blood has been breached that is not an issue There was encounter, but we managed to uh, smooth that over. To that end, uh, Olver and I have uh, refrained from any sort of engagement, direct engagement with him or anyone else associated with him. Albana, you refrain? Why? Oh, I don't take this the wrong way. I understand why um, La Biena would be reluctant to engage in face-to-face -face conversations. But uh, Albana, I am surprised that you are of the same mind. During one of the, meet on the initial meeting that we had, my peculiar trait of a uh, lowering the temperature of things around me resulted in him growing aware of me, wary of me, believing that I was possessed by some evil spirit or something of the sort. As I mentioned, a rather perilous encounter. We were able to smooth it over, but we thought it best to not risk bringing her, her over again. I see. So... Um, how did you, what was your strategy to involve yourself in his life? How did that, uh, how did that happen? Well, we've, uh, initially, predominantly tried to make ourselves known through, um, work, through working with him and under him in his, uh, various campaigns. 
and uh, let's go. Oh, it's good for D line. So, how did you involve yourself in his campaign? That's I'm. How did you get a hold of him to uh, we, even get a meeting? We, we um, used our connections um, and uh, used the bureaucracy to connect with him, have a meeting with him, personal face-to-face -face meeting with him in his villa, and then we proceeded to. Uh, essentially have a conversation about how and why we can be useful to his campaign um, eventually uh, he accepted our offer and we figuratively shook hands and afterwards we just helped him uh, directly and sometimes indirectly you yeah. In particular, we used our own resources to help with some of his, uh, spreading his message across. Pretty much. Money. Money. And other stuff. Uh, I should add you are aware that we have been building up a cult of uh, following since uh, a few decades past. Have you put them, them to us supporting his campaign? I and to uh, managed to make use of the connections that some of our childers had or had at, in the army to get uh, the first meeting going with him. We played on his, uh, what's the word, his uh, patriotical uh, desires, uh, personalities, whatever you name it. I have trouble believing that you knew it would work. I feel like you played quite fast and loose with uh, any kind of real understanding of what his goals were. Yeah. We thought it would be the best if we... We were in his circle as quick as possible to uh, well, prevent any danger to his goals and his life as quick as possible. So, do they know your real names? I don't, yeah, out of here, I don't really remember. Uh, yes, he does. Oh uh, yeah, yes, yes. Okay, those. We we told our real names. And his supporters, they know your real names as well. Um, not all of them. His brother, and the bold woman, he had with uh, near him, and uh, his wife definitely knows our name. Um, but his supporters, we have been in a couple of parties but we didn't really told our names to them. Um, so they probably don't know our names. And how about his enemies? Do they know your names and faces? Uh, I think. There is one group in particular that we're not quite sure if it is one of his enemies or supporters that knows us quite well. Another group of vampires that have been present. In oh, yeah. Events. They are, uh, they are, hel they are helping, supporting uh, Marcus Octavius' case. Uh, I don't know if Marcus knows that these people are helping him or not, but they are helping nonetheless. But they wouldn't know all of us. Well, yeah, they didn't see all of us. No, or they might have done their... They know nothing about. Yeah. But 
there's of course a potential that they did their study and still would know all of us, but they didn't see all of us uh, face to face. Well, let me ask you an opinion based question. Why would it be bad or good? And I want to hear both. That they know your real names. That they know who you are. If something were to happen and our real names were known, well, it gets pinned straight to us. In the worst case, it can also provide a trail by which enemies can, well, track our, track our dealings. On the other hand, and this is perhaps the more simple one, I've heard it say that the more complicated factors there are to a plan, the more likely that something can go wrong. If, unless we saw a particular need, using a fake name, using fake names could potentially backfire if it became clear that, well, they weren't our real names, and uh, he suddenly had felt, he suddenly became suspicious of us. Well, more than suspicious, I think such a small yet important thing, if learned to be a lie, it can easily uh, slip the mutual trust uh, away from our fingers. So it's better that we do not risk uh, our relationship for such a, uh, well, s simple yet important thing. To risk the, uh, getting flack from his enemies is a risk that I believe is worth taking in securing his loyalty, in securing his support. After all, the entire point of this is to make sure that he's going to rely on us enough to where we may help him. And when you were coming up with this, did you consider what's going to happen afterwards? What if um, Tiberius is defeated? What if his enemies go after his supporters? How will you handle that? Will you defeat his enemies? Perhaps you create no, no. different entities for ourselves. We we won't be the the in the front line beating them, but we will uh, use more discreet ways to help our cause and their cause. Yes, but how? How will you defend yourselves if, say, they banish all of his supporters? We disassociate ourselves. If necessary, we create uh, other identities. As well, well, it is not like uh, creating new identities as a new thing for our kind. Well, public uh, pressure uh, is important for integrity of the of any city, um, and then there is um, factors of how many supporters uh, Tiberius would have if he is banished from Rome, and financial help, of course, helps acquiring. Uh, manpower of different kind, including soldiers, mercenaries, you name it. Um, uh, these things are important. And then if we can sway some parts of the political opposition, uh, either through favors uh, and similar assets, ways, uh, we can also try to help through that. Like, if we can actually sway enough politicians, maybe the banishment could be lifted. I'm not sure. 
Um, but yeah, at worst case, enough money, and maybe he can bring his bring up an army of good size and march to Rome. Frankly, if things got uh, sufficiently troublesome, uh, as on the table. Well, things have likely got sufficiently out of hand that any that most of most um, countermeasures we could have thought of would be rendered ineffective. Well, and again, uh, the Tribune has a good portion of the plebeians on his side, and plebeians are stronger number-wise. And once the numbers understand that they are bigger, well, they quite uh, quickly become a dangerous side. Agatha, my dear, you should understand, you of all people should understand that numbers are not necessarily a deciding factor. After all, all of you here have uh, valid reason to hate me, and yet I sit amongst you without fear, because I know there's nothing you can do about it. Why do you think that that situation is any different for the populace of Rome? Oh, I, I think it's a little bit different because, well... In this case, we are talking about five of us and my prince you. Uh, and in the other case, we are talking about maybe, I don't really know, 100 person or something against several thousand. And I think in that case, numbers are much more consistent in their danger. See, what you fail to realize is that it's not the numbers, it's the will to act. The populace of Rome does not have the will to act in a contravention of the Senate. They do not. Yeah, I think. They, I think in history there was a moment. Yes, there was a moment. I agree. There was a moment. There no longer is a moment. Carthage was a power. Carthage no longer is a power. Capua was once a threat to Rome. Capua no longer is a threat to Rome. What was does not necessarily matter. What matters is what is. Now, as I was saying before I got sidetracked, Why did you not use an intermediary? Or, I mean, that is uh, surely the most efficient way to protect yourselves, to put somebody between you and the trouble. You want to have a more hands-on approach, a more direct, uh, a more direct connection, rather than rely on a middleman go between us. Particularly after it became clear that uh, other kindred were getting themselves involved, uh, relying on relying on people with uh, relying on others could easily become well worse almost. So yes, let's discuss these other other canites. Um, you've mentioned them several times. I would like to know who are they, all of them, and what are their goals? Mm -hmm. uh, we got the Acteon, the Gangria. Uh, I don't think, was he directly involved? No, he wasn't. Yeah. Septimus, not Actium. Okay, okay, Sept mm. Septimus, okay. Uh, we got the Septimus, the Gangria. Uh, we do know that he said he's doing this because of a boon, um, so his hands are forced. We do know there is a Lysandra, 
um, her name was... Uh, I think I remember the name of the little form. I knew the name of the little form on the uh, other one. Uh, Chris? It's uh, Hector something. Hector, okay, so uh, we got the Hector de la Sombra. Um, we do not know much about his reasons behind doing this, but... Uh, well, he seems quite eager on succeeding. We can't say that. I, I know that several clans have an interest in this whole affair. My... We've been trying... We've... While it's been difficult to track down specifics, it's very possible that a uh, that uh, at least one Ventru has, uh, well, taken the point of view that uh, the Tiberius shouldn't succeed and uh, called on some favors to try and make sure that that it doesn't go forward. Um. Let me let me be more uh, specific, my prince. Uh, the Ventru's name is Swan Kilmia, uh, and the La Sombra's name Hector Marcellinus. Uh, yes, that's, that's their name. <coughs> How long have these rivals? <laughs> been in Rome. Been in Rome? Um, I cannot really answer, but they've been our rivals since we started this um, uh, task. Um, w could I make a roll to know ha approximately how long any of them have been around? Yeah, that's going to be, uh, let's see, intelligence and... Uh, let's go with, all right, um, politics, seneschal, or academics. Can I do the same thing for you? Is the difficulty going to be different for any of them? Uh, it'll be six for politics, seven for academics, and uh, eight for seneschal. Uh, can I make the same roll? Uh, no, because, uh, she had to ask first. Okay. All right. All right, Suwana, you know, has been here for as long as you have, but she's also quite young. Hector, you have no freaking idea. Um, he's just, but he's a more recent arrival. Uh, Septimus, um, is, again, about your age, and has been here about as long as you. So there are no genuine elders yet amongst the ones you have met. Hmm. Uh, Do I know if they used to be clients to anyone? Not with one success, you don't. Damn. Because an, because an idea suddenly occurs to me. I mean, you can go with the suggestion, you know, just guess in character. That it is a test that yeah. uh, they have been set up by Camillus to mm. test us, and whoever succeeds is the one that's going to be his clients. I'm exactly. sure that that mm. if, I, if I may um, posit a hypothesis, uh, Have you perhaps been interested in testing multiple coteries at once? No, I do not. I do not harbor interest in the goings-ons of most of the younglings here in, in Rome. I, uh, I only look at those who have drawn my interest. Fair enough. It was, um... It was an idle, an idle thought. Um, what is? Um, they are 
no matter how long they've been in Rome, they are definitely been our rival uh, since this conflict going on, being going on between these two mortals. Mm. Um, they, they, yeah, they, they seem to be persistent on preventing us from succeeding. Now they showed more interest in direct lethal conflict, um, but uh, they definitely do not hold back with use of supernatural powers, even among the people. No, why do you think, why do you think that they have not been too interested in open conflict? It uh, doesn't help. It, it does not help anyone. Plus, I, I think it is, yeah, plus it is, I think, uh, less boring. Like it's, it's a boring thing to do, direct conflict to solve your issues. What did you say, Labiana? That's my personal thing. Hmm? You said something, I didn't quite hear it. <clears throat> oh, alright. I just said, it seems, it just seems like disruption to me. Perhaps, perhaps they're more interested in seeing us fail than seeing, in, and in particular, us not getting a foothold than uh, anything else. Or perhaps, or perhaps they simply don't care enough about us so long as we stay out of their way. I mean, I also think that we have a good potential to if we are all as a coterie together, a good potential to actually defeat them in this coterie versus coterie case. Um, we have, yeah, I think we got the power for that. I think that you place too much emphasis on your own self-importance. Labiana. You said that might just their tactic might just be disruption. Disruption of what? Just disruption of you? What what would be their goal? Why would they use such tactics upon you? I don't think general disruption in Rome. Yes, but why focus on you? <clears throat> why not upon some of his other clients or uh uh, if they were really worried about you, why would they not take more firm steps? Um, maybe it's because they know that uh, we are trained. Uh, to be your um, vassals. I don't know the right word for this. So I'm just gonna use the... he, he starts laughing. <laughs> relax, relax. I'm, I'm just playing with you guys. I don't know why they're out there doing this stuff to you. I just wanted you to, I wanted to stimulate your thinking. I did not want you to become locked into one, tr one uh, method of thought. Their friends would not even know if they are actually related to Marcus in this. I do not believe we ever actually learned who is the patron. Yes. Most of all, otherwise, we do not know who they are actually working for, if there is any other kindred behind them holding the chains. I was wondering no, I... how long it would take take you to point it out, and he nods at, uh, he nods at Almana. I thought it might be you who hits upon that. Who is pulling their chain? Who pulls the chain of almost all the Sombra here? Who Look pulls the chain of the other Ventru? Um, Demetrius. That's just her telling the names of the first people that come to mind as she hears the clans. Well, Montano.
Some oh, but uh, you're telling me if over. Montano had snapped his fingers, you would not just jump to see what he wanted? That depends what she offers me. But you would respond. Yes. <clears throat> there are other powerful Ventru vying for attention. Not... Montano by himself is akin unto... Well, he is akin unto an earthquake. A titan. One does not... <clears throat> one does not presume to lord over a titan such as Montano. One must only guide them. Even one such as myself. Are there others in the Eternal Senate, perhaps, who hold out hope of uh, supplanting me in uh, such a role to helm the ship themselves, as it were? What do you think? If you are worried about the La Sombra clan as a whole, then I'd expect you to keep a, dis a greater distance from the likes of Aconia. Well, one thing I've learned in my, t in my time as a kindred is that we all long for some form of power in one way or another. Um, Albana, your comment sparks another laugh. And he's... Uh, am I worried about the La Sombra clan as a whole? No, of course not. Montano has pledged his loyalty to me. Pledged it when we took Carthage. Pledged to support me. And I know he will hold to that until the sun rises in the west. Wait, shit. Is that the sun there? Oh, shit! So, rest... You may rest, uh... That worry. No, no, I'm, uh... I'm far more concerned with... Be more subtle. If you were Montano, would you not want a ear in the court of every possible successor to me? Probably. Uh, yeah, I would. I suppose so. I would want to have a good perception over a powerhouse. Yes, yeah, yeah. I guess that from our point of view, you have been the prince of prince for so long that the idea of you having a success is something that does not even come through our minds. Oh, well, <clears throat> it uh, never comes to my mind either, yet there are others to whom such a possibility uh, is a prize. They're playing the game. So if you, you being Montano, were to realize that there is a, a game of politics going on with many possible outcomes, would you not wish to control as <clears throat> many of those outcomes as possible? Obviously, have a, a, ensure that whatever the outcome is, it will be beneficial to me. So doesn't it make sense that he would uh, install an agent with instructions not to kill, only to harass? Yes, perhaps, depending on what the stigma was said, harassment. And I think this agent might be more willing to... It might be amenable to civil conversation. And in fact, unless I miss my mark, that's exactly what this invitation's about. And uh, <clears throat> somebody comes in and, and I'm going to emphasize something. Romans don't bow. 
They consider it a mark of subservience, and Romans are not subservient to anyone. Except for the slaves, but you know. Yeah, except for slaves. Yeah. Well, what, what about Etruscans? <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> this guy comes in and he he uh, genuflects essentially down to the floor and holds out a, a scroll uh, to the closest person amongst you guys, whoever it is. They hand it out to you. We'll take it. Um. Uh, Hatchips it. Do, please, read it. I would like to know what it says. Hatchips it. It's, uh, it is a message from one Hector asking to talk to you in the bathhouse as a group about some uh, terrible concerns regarding Tiberius Gracchus. Oh, I such. The La Sombra Hector wishes to meet with us in the bathhouse to discuss the whole Gracchus situation. Speak of the devil. It is fortunate that we are able to act upon the advice of a prince so soon after he has been given. She's going to give him a knowing look as imagine that he might have been the one that arranged that. He just stares at you with a perfect poker face. <laughs> As he does. It is a... <clears throat> it's a pleasant sensation when your prediction proves correct. And I didn't even need Triphosa to make it for me. Oh yeah, Triforce here. Has she said anything this entire conversation? Not a word. Yeah, true. Um, okay. Well, I suppose we shall wrap this up then. As uh, <laughs> engrossing as I find your company. Further pleasures await me to while the night away. And I do think you would not want to miss this conversation. No, we wouldn't. Of course. Thank you for your time, my prince. Have a, uh, enjoy your night. Um, he gestures to one of the uh, one of the servants who gets up to show you out. I believe we all make our way out of the room. All right. Um, <clears throat> do you guys do anything, uh, or do you go right to the um, bathhouse? We might as well just go straight to the bathhouse. How late is it into the night? Mm, also, that's a good question. It's approximately 2 a.m. The sun is going to come up in about four more hours. In keeping down waiting, and no sense in risking, um, this, in risking the sun. Yeah, let's let's go to him. I just wonder if we shouldn't leave anyone behind to keep a tab on things. While we're talking, something must might be happening. Who did they, uh, did they see all of us last time? I don't think they've ever seen you. No. Hmm. But they might know That's, you. That should stay that way. They know about our haven, so it's likely mm -hmm. to know about La Biena. Yes. But still. Now, because they probably did not have uh, physical contact with you, they did, I do not think they ever applied like some supernatural influence on you, so if you do not go to their presence, physical presence, then it might be good, even though they, uh, they still know about you. 
we we don't know how subtle things they can do to you and how it can be a problem later on and we also don't know how much they do know if anything at all So I, I don't think you should uh, stay hidden, at least. I'll be honest, I thought you guys would say, you know what? Well, this guy can wait. He made us wait. He's, he's hurt us so much. <laughs> uh, just fuck it. Well, he can wait till tomorrow. <laughs> uh, I don't think so, he'll, he'll um, give a dirty, dirty result to that. Though, <laughs> I may actually need to drop out earlier than usual tonight. Okay. Um, some things are going around that I need to pay attention to. Um, okay. Well, I'll tell you guys what. You want to cut it off a little bit early tonight? Yeah. Okay. Right. Better. That's fine. All right. Uh, yes. we're gonna do two ex two experience points for tonight. Um. Some uh, very subtle conversational stuff happened that uh, I think went really well, and you guys hit on some really good stuff that you you needed to pick up on, and you did. He, I'm guessing he cared more about how we answered than the answers we gave. Well, um, as a out of character statement, <clears throat> the answer he cared more about was: Were you protecting yourself while you did all this? And the answer is no. The answer was no. 100%. Um, so now he's interested in how are you going to deal with it? Because the way things are shaping up, the fallout is going to be significant. So um, he's interested in seeing how you handle the inevitable... The enemies of the enemies of Tiberius are coming to wreak vengeance on all of his allies. So it just kind of depends on what is that what is that going to look like, and even he can't answer that. Yeah. Well, remember, we do have one secret weapon. Interesting. All right, I, I gotta drop now, guys. Right, good night. Bye. See you. Good night. Gotcha. I'll be on for a minute typing everything up if you guys want to uh, ask me any questions or do anything. So, um, Okay, guys, that was session 76. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening. Um, quite a little bit of politicking going on. Tried to cut some of the excess uh, talking in circles. Hope you like the subtle... Uh, subtleties here of trying to figure out what is what are they doing? Why are they opposing me? Who knows what and when did they know it? How do they know it? Such things in the world of darkness can be the difference between life and death, or unlife and death, as it were. So, hope you join us again for episode 77. Uh, the conversation should prove quite interesting. Thank you. Have a great evening.